Presenting Mr. Keene, tracer of lost persons in The Silver Candlestick Murder Case, a new weekly feature on NBC's All-Star Festival of mystery, comedy, music, and drama. Ladies and gentlemen, once again we present Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, one of the most famous characters of American fiction in one of radio's most thrilling dramas. Tonight, the famous old investigator takes from his file and brings to us one of his most celebrated missing persons cases. Tonight's case is entitled The Silver Candlestick Murder. Mr. Keene is presented by Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia, and by Dentine, the gum with breathtaking flavor, and Beeman's Pepsin, the gum that's great to chew and good for your digestion, too. And by Chesterfield. Chesterfields are much milder and with an extraordinarily good taste and no unpleasant aftertaste. If you suffer from pains of headaches, neuritis, or neuralgia, you should discover what many thousands have known for years, that Anison brings incredibly fast, effective relief. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Probably at some time you've received an envelope containing Anison tablets from your physician or dentist. Thousands of people have been introduced to Anison this way. Try Anison yourself the next time you suffer from the pains of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. You'll be delighted at how quickly relief can come. Anison is spelled A N A C I N. Your druggist has Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30 tablets and economical family size bottles of 50 and 100 for your medicine cabinet. Ask for Anison today. Now, Mr. Keene, tracer of lost persons in The Silver Candlestick Murder Case. The scene opens in the dimly lit drawing room of an old mansion on New York's Upper Fifth Avenue. It's about nine o'clock at night, and a rather shabbily dressed but handsome young man has been pacing the room. Suddenly, he notices a photograph on the mahogany desk. Quickly, he walks toward it, his face showing stunned bewilderment. Great Scott, it can't be. But it is. Why, this... this photograph. It's fantastic. I've got to get out of here. I was a fool to have come. Oh. Oh, I beg your pardon. I I didn't see anyone come in. What are you doing with that silver candlestick? You... you struck me. No, no, don't. Don't you... Mr. Keene, my name is Mrs. Grace Denning. I need your help most desperately. Please sit down, Mrs. Denning. Mike? Uh, Yes, boss? Mrs. Denning, this is my partner, Mike Clancy. How do you do, ma'am? How do you do? Mr. Keene, I know you're a famous murder investigator... And also that you trace people who are missing. Yes? I want you to find my husband. Neil has disappeared. And I'm so terribly frightened. How long has your husband been missing, Mrs. Denning? Only since yesterday, Mr. Keene. But I know something dreadful has happened to him. Neil is an actor, but acting jobs are scarce. So he's been working as a model for artists and photographers to get money. He's very handsome. Well, yesterday, he had a telephone call. Yes? Go on, Mrs. Denning. As I came into the room, I overheard Neil saying, I'm not going through with it. It's too dangerous, much too dangerous. There was a long pause, and then he said, Very well, then. I need the money. I'll be there. Then he wrote down an address and hung up the receiver. And, Mr. Keene, Neil's face was white as a sheet. Mrs. Denning, did you question your husband about the phone call? Oh, yes. But he was very nervous and and evasive. He told me he was going out to pose for a photographer and wouldn't be home until late. 
Mr. Keene, that was almost 24 hours ago, and he hasn't returned. Well, sure, and that's mighty queer. I, I mean, the phone call he got. Yes, Mr. Clancy, and let me tell the rest of it. I overheard Neil repeat that address where he was going just before he hung up the phone. So this morning I went there. But it isn't an office building or a studio at all. It's a grim-looking old mansion. I... I kept ringing the bell, but nobody answered. Oh, Mr. Keene, please help me find Neil. I'm certain he's in dreadful danger or... or worse. Mrs. Denning, write down your address on this paper. And the address your husband repeated on the phone. The place where he apparently went last night. Very well. Oh, Mr. Keene, you will search for Neil, won't you? Yes, but I'm afraid from what you tell me of that phone call that your husband was involved in a dangerous undertaking and possibly feared for his life. Oh, Mr. Keene, you don't think... It's too soon to guess, Mrs. Denning. Now, you go home and wait until Mike Clancy and I investigate. And try not to worry. Bless you. Goodbye, Mr. Keene and Mr. Clancy. So long, Mrs. Denning. Mike, I recognize this address where Neil Denning is supposed to have gone last evening. You do, boss? Yes. It's the old Tilden mansion. The home of a rich and elderly recluse. Miss Abigail Tilden. Well, sure, and what would Neil Denning have been doing there, boss? I don't know, Mike. And I don't like it. For instance, why didn't anyone answer the door when Neil Denning's wife went there today? Come along. Let's go there and see what we can find out. Well, this is the Tilden Mansion, Mike. And would you ring the doorbell, please? Right, boss. Oh, Mr. Kane. I recall now reading about Miss Abigail Tilden. She's from one of those real old society families. Yes, Mike. In fact, I knew her slightly many years ago. Yes? What is it? Uh, my name is Keene, and this is my partner, Mike Clancy. Mr. Keene, the famous investigator? Yes, and uh, who are you, young lady? I'm Elise Tilden. Won't you come in? I take it you are related to Miss Abigail Tilden. I'm her niece. Come into the drawing room, Mr. Keene. Mr. Clancy. Thank you. Elise, my dear, who are these gentlemen? Oh, this is Mr. Keene and Mr. Clancy, Donald. My fiancé, Donald Stiles. Oh, Mr. Keene, I've heard of you, of course. Uh, is something wrong? Yes, Mr. Stiles. A young actor and artist model, uh, Neil Denning, disappeared last night. His wife has reason to believe he came here to this house. What? Well, I've never even heard of such a man, Mr. Keene. Well, nor have I. He certainly didn't come here, Mr. Keene. Elise went out for about an hour last evening, but I was here. No one rang the doorbell. You're sure of that, Mr. Stiles? Positive. No one came here last night. I see. Well, thank you very much, Miss Tilden, Mr. Stiles. Come along, Mike. Uh, yes, boss. I'm sorry we couldn't be of help, Mr. Keene. Well, goodbye. Well, now, what do you make of that, boss? Sure, maybe Mrs. Denning got the wrong address. Mike, I happen to notice something in that drawing room. A dark stain on the carpet. It may have been a blood stain. A blood stain? Saints preserve us. Then those two, Miss Tilden and her fiancé, were lying to us. Mike, just on a hunch, I think you and I will have a look in the cellar of this old Tilden house. Now, let's go round to the back and see if there's a door or a window we might get in. Come along, Mike. Keep your flashlight on, Mike. It's pitch dark in this old cellar. This place is more like a, a dungeon than a cellar, Mr. Keene. Mike, wait. Turn the flashlight over to the left. There, that's it. Why, it looks like a coal bin. Yes. Let's look inside. Mike, look here. Mr. Keene, it's the body of a man. Yes. Oh, and his head's been bashed in by something. He was obviously killed by a blow on the head. Mike, 
we found the answer to Neil Denning's disappearance. He did come here to the old Tilden mansion last night, and he was brutally murdered. Mr. Keene, do you suppose that... Well, Mike, someone's coming. Switch off the flashlight. Can you see who it is, boss? Mr. Keene! Mr. Keene! I'm all right, Mike, but whoever fired at us is getting away. Well, the flashlight's broken. Boss, whoever it was, went up some steps. Here, Mike, here's the staircase. It must lead into the house. Come on. Now the door, Mike. Hurry. Well, I'm trying to find the doorknob. Well, here. Here it is, boss. Well, it looks like we're in the back hallway of the Tilden Mansion, Mr. Keene. But there's no sign of the person who shot at us. Come on. Down this hall, Mike. Who's there? Why, Mr. Keene, Mr. Clancy. I was up in my Aunt Abigail's room when I thought I heard shots. You did hear shots, Miss Tilden. Someone fired at Mike and me while we were down in the cellar. You were down in the cellar? And whoever it was came up the cellar stairs and got away through the house. Or he may still be here. Good heavens. Miss Tilden, where is your fiancé, Donald Stiles? Why, he left the house about five minutes ago. <gasps> Mr. Keene, surely you don't think Donald tried to kill you? Why, that's fantastic. Miss Tilden, Mike Clancy and I have just discovered the murdered body of a young actor, Neil Denning, in a coal bin in the cellar. What? Oh, no. Is he the young man you came here to inquire about? Yes, Miss Tilden. Uh, where's your telephone? In the study. I'm going to call the police at once. Oh, but Mr. Keene. Yes? Must you call the police? I mean, it's all so dreadful and scandalous. Miss Tilden, you seem to forget that there's a brutal killer at large. A killer who must be caught before he has a chance to murder again. I know, Mr. Keene, but I'm thinking of my Aunt Abigail... She'll be horrified and shocked by the, the scandal. And after all, why should we be involved? None of us ever heard of that man who was murdered. I'm sorry, Miss Tilden, but you are very much involved. In fact, until this case is solved, everyone in this house is under suspicion of murder. <laughs> Mr. Keene will return in just a moment in The Silver Candlestick Murder Case. But first, now here's something of interest to you. For breathless moments, for your breathless moments... Chew dentine, the gum with <sighs> breathtaking flavor. Dentine tastes so good. Dentine freshens your breath. Dentine helps keep your teeth sparkling clean and white. Dentine... The gum with <gasps> breathtaking flavor. Before you go out and always after eating, drinking, smoking, refresh your breath with dentine. You'll love dentine chewing gum, for dentine has a wonderful tingling, nippy flavor that lingers on and on. It's delicious. And remember, dentine helps keep your teeth white, too. Keep dentine handy. You'll enjoy refreshing your breath when you chew dentine. So, for breathless moments, for your breathless moments... Chew dentine, the gum with <gasps> breathtaking flavor. Now back to Mr. Keene and the Silver Candlestick Murder Kit. When Neil Denning, a handsome young actor and artist model, mysteriously disappeared, his attractive young wife, Grace, begged Mr. Keene to try and find him. Mr. Keene and his partner, Mike Clancy, have visited a grim old Fifth Avenue mansion and questioned Elise Tilden, niece of its owner, eccentric old Miss Abigail Tilden, and Elise's fiancé, Donald Stiles, who both claim never to have heard of Neil Denning. But a short while ago... Mr. Keene and Mike discovered Neil's body in the cellar of the mansion. Now they're approaching the apartment of Neil Denning to break the news to the widow of the murdered man. And Mike is saying, well, This is Mrs. Denning's apartment, Mr. Keene. It'll be tough to have to tell her her husband has been murdered. Yes, Mike. But it's and too I do... great. Mike, 
Listen. So you don't know what you're saying. I won't listen. Boss, that's Grace Denning's voice. Grace, I tell you, Neil, it's no good. The sooner you realize that and clear out of here, the better. Mr. Denning apparently has a visitor, Mike. Uh, Ring the doorbell. Oh, Mr. Keene and Mr. Clancy. Won't you come in? Um, This is Alan Page, a a friend of my husband, Neil. Alan, this is Mr. Keene and Mr. Clancy. How do you do? How do you do? So you claim to be a friend of Neil Denning's, do you, Mr. Page? Well, sure, when we heard you a minute ago, you aren't talking like any friend of his. So you heard me, did you? Very well, Mr. Clancy, I admit it. I was telling Grace it was ridiculous to ask Mr. Keene to find Neil. He hasn't disappeared. He's probably just walked out on her. Alan, don't say any more. Grace, I told you Neil was no good even before you married him. I thought he'd pull a stunt like this. It happens you're mistaken, Mr. Page. We have just come to tell Mrs. Denning some very shocking news. Mr. Keene, you don't mean... I'm sorry, Mrs. Denning. Your husband has been murdered. Oh. Mike and I found his body about half an hour ago. No. I'm very sorry to bring you this news. Neil. Oh, Neil. Grace. Let me alone, Alan. Let me alone. Mr. Keene, this is horrible. Or maybe it's not as horrible as you'd like us to think, Mr. Page. What do you mean by that, Clancy? My partner means, Mr. Page, that if you were in love with Grace Denning, as you obviously seem to be, the police may consider you a strong suspect in Neil Denning's murder. Why, you're insane, Mr. Keene. It's true I'm in love with Grace Denning. And for her sake, I tried to help Neil get back on his feet. He was an actor and out of work most most of the time. Why, I even got a job for him. What kind of a job? Why, yesterday, a man who belongs to the same club I do said he might have work for Neil Denning and asked for his phone number. I assumed it was a modeling job for a photographer. Neil was doing that work as a sideline lately. Mr. Page, who is this man who is so interested in Neil Denning? His name is Stiles, Donald Stiles. Saints preserve us, Mr. Keene, sir. The man Lee Tilden is engaged to. Yes, Mike. Mr. Page, how well do you know this uh, Donald Stiles? Only casually, Mr. Keene. He's a well-dressed chap, always seemed to have money. I never knew what business he was in. I see. Well, come along, Mike. We're going. Right, sir. Mr. Keene, at first I thought this fellow Alan Page might have murdered Neil Denning. But now I... Mike... Donald Stiles denied ever having heard of Neil Denning. Now we know he was lying. But why? Well, sure, and you got me there, Mr. Keene, sir. Mike, I want you to check on Donald Stiles. Find out all you can about him. Right, boss. But what about you, Mr. Keene? I'm going back to the Tilden mansion where Neil Denning was murdered. And pay a call on old Abigail Tilden. You mean the old aunt who never goes out of her room or sees anybody? Yes. But I'll have to insist on seeing her. As soon as you've checked on Donald Stiles, uh, phone me there. And uh, hurry, Mike. Well, Miss Abigail, it's been many years since I've had the pleasure of seeing you. Mr. Keene, I know why you're calling on me now. I know there's been a murder here in my house. I couldn't help but know with police all over the place. Uh, Miss Abigail, last evening, did you hear anything unusual? No, I did not, Mr. Keene. I never leave my room. My niece went out for a while last night, and her fiancé, Donald Stiles, came up here to my room to keep me company. (laughs) I could have done very well without that young man's company. You don't approve of Donald Stiles? He's a thoroughgoing rascal. Only after release, because he knows that she'll inherit all of my fortune now. Now, what do you mean by now, Miss Abigail? I mean now that I've cut Robbie out of my will. And uh, who is Robbie? Why, my nephew, Mr. Keene, and the finest boy who ever lived. Till he walked out on me five years ago, after we quarreled. He disappeared. That's Robbie's picture there on the table. Oh, yes. Yes. 
I raised Robbie and Elise, their cousins. But Robbie, my nephew, was my favorite until he left this house. I have no idea where he is. And after all, I did for him. Uh, that phone call may be for me, Miss Abigail. You can take it on the extension in the hall, Mr. Keene. Thank you. Uh, will you excuse me, please? Hello? Uh, Mr. Keene, uh, this is Mike Clancy. Yes, Mike. Well, boss, I've checked on Donald Stiles. He's no good. He owes $10,000 to an underworld character named Joe Parrish, who owns a nightclub where Stiles throws expensive champagne parties. Yes, go on, Mike. Well, Donald Stiles got engaged to Miss Elise Tilden about three months ago. And the talk's going around that he's after the rich old aunt's money. I've just been talking to the aunt, Miss Abigail Tilden. And, Mike, I've discovered something. You want me to come over there, boss? Yes, Mike. Get over here to the old Tilden mansion right away. Well, Mr. Keene, I didn't know you'd come back. Oh, uh, Mr. Stiles... Have you found any clue to that young man, Neil Denning's murder? Uh, yes. I suggest you and I go into the sitting room here and talk. Certainly. It's a shocking thing you're finding his body in the cellar of this house. I suppose someone must have murdered him last night out on the street and dragged his body into the cellar to hide it. Mr. Stiles, you can stop lying. What? I have found out that last night you telephoned Neil Denning at his home and arranged for him to come here to this house at 8 o'clock. Why, Mr. Keene, I... A few minutes ago, in Miss Abigail Tilden's room, I saw a photograph of her nephew, Robbie, who left home five years ago after a quarrel with his aunt. Well? That photograph bears a startling resemblance to the murdered man, Neil Denning. Mr. Stiles... I'm convinced that you were planning a fraud of some kind. A fraud which involved the missing nephew, Robbie, and Neil Denning, the actor who looked just like him. And when Neil Denning discovered it, did you murder him to keep him quiet? No. No. I didn't kill him. Mr. Keene, I... Uh, I'll tell you everything. It's true, I did hire Neil Denning to come here last night. I owe a certain big nightclub owner a good deal of money. I, I was afraid my fiancée, Elise Tilden, would find out and break our engagement. So I had to get money, fast. Go on, Mr. Stiles. I knew about Elise's cousin, Robbie, who'd left home five years ago. When I happened to see the actor, Neil Denning's picture, in a magazine advertisement, I, I was struck with an idea. I think I know the rest, Mr. Stiles. You engaged Neil Denning, who was an actor, to impersonate the missing nephew, Robbie. Yes, Mr. Keene. You see, Abigail Tilden is a very old lady. Her eyesight is poor and her mind wanders sometimes. I was sure Neil Denning could fool her into thinking he was her missing nephew, Robbie. And then what was he to do? Uh, Neil Denning impersonating Robbie was to say that he'd returned home, but that he needed $20,000 right away. I hoped old Miss Abigail would give him the money. Then Neil Denning and I would split. A very daring scheme, Mr. Stiles. I knew my fiancée, Elise Tilden, would be out last evening. I went to her Aunt Abigail's room, and Neil Denning waited in the drawing room, ready to come upstairs and pull off his impersonation. But when I went down to get him, he was gone, Mr. Keene. He, he disappeared. Donald? Oh, uh, Elise... Mr. Keene, you're here. Yes, Miss Tilden. I was about to tell your fiancé, uh, Donald Stiles, that I now have proof as to who murdered that young man, Neil Denning. You see, I have in my possession the weapon that was used to kill him. You have the murder weapon, Mr. Keene? Yes, Miss Tilden. And there are fingerprints on it which will establish the murderer's identity beyond doubt. I intend to turn it over to the police right away. Oh, no, you don't, Mr. Keene. Stand where you are. Elise, that gun. Yes, Donald, I have a gun. Mr. Keene, you're going to hand that silver candlestick over to me. So it was a silver candlestick you used to beat Neil Denning over the head and kill him. I'm glad to know that, Elise Tilden, because now I can search this house for it. Then you didn't have the candlestick at all. You tricked me, Keene. Yes, it was a trick, and it worked. All right. 
I admit I killed that man, Neil Denning. But I did it for you, Donald. Elise, you're crazy. Go on, Elise. You may as well confess. I came home early last night. I walked into the drawing room and saw that man, Neil Denning, standing there. In the dim light, I, I thought it was my cousin Robbie come home after all these years. I was frantic. I knew Robbie would win Aunt Abigail over to him again. He was always her favorite. She'd leave all her money to him and I'd lose everything. So I picked up the silver candlestick and killed Neil Denning. Elise! Elise, how could you? I told you I did it because of you, Donald. I know you don't really love me. You'd leave me if I didn't inherit Aunt Abigail's fortune. And so in a moment of panic, Miss Tilden, you murdered the man you thought might take that fortune from you. When I saw it wasn't my cousin Robbie, but a stranger, it was too late, Mr. Keene. So I dragged his body to the cellar, trying to hide it. And that gun in your hand is the same gun you fired at Mike Clancy and me when we were in the cellar. I suspected it when we came upstairs, and I noticed a smudge of coal dust on your dress. But I needed proof. It won't do you any good. I've killed once, and I'll do it again. Oh, no, you don't, young lady. <coughs> now, give me that gun. Let go of me. There. <coughs> there, I've got the gun now, Mr. Keene, sir. And this lady won't be causing any more trouble. You got here just in time, Mike. Donald Stiles here is guilty of attempted fraud. An evil crime, to be sure. But it's Elise Tilden who will pay the supreme penalty for the murder of Neil Denny. And so Mr. Keene finds the solution to the silver candlestick murder case. The mask is off. The mask is off in cigarette advertising. Chesterfield is first to name all of its ingredients, and here they are. Chesterfield uses the right combination of the world's best tobaccos, pre-tested by laboratory instruments for the most desirable smoking qualities, and kept tasty and fresh by the only tried and tested moistening agents, proved by over 40 years of continuous use in USA tobacco products as entirely safe for use in the mouth pure natural sugars, and chemically pure, harmless, and far more costly glycerol. Nothing else. And remember this. Chesterfields are wrapped in pure white cigarette paper, the best that money can buy. You can be glad if you smoke Chesterfields because they give you every advantage known to modern science. For you, that means that Chesterfields are much milder, with an extraordinarily good taste and no unpleasant aftertaste. All for your smoking pleasure and protection. So sound off for Chesterfields and do it today. Listen again next week to Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, a new weekly feature on NBC's All-Star Festival of mystery, comedy, music, and drama. Brought to you by Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. And by Dentine, the gum with breathtaking flavor. And Beeman's Pepsin, the gum that's great to chew and good for your digestion, too. And by Chesterfield. Remember, Chesterfields are much milder, with an extraordinarily good taste. And from the report of a well-known research organization, Chesterfields leave no unpleasant aftertaste. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, is based on the novel, Mr. Keene. The radio sequel is originated and produced by Frank and Ann Hummer. Dialogue by Gene Carroll, directed by Richard Leonard. Philip Clark plays Mr. Keene. Your announcer, Jack Costello. Remember, Mr. Keene is on the air at this same time every Thursday at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. Don't miss Mr. Keene next Thursday. When the kindly old tracer turns to the house on the cliff murder case. Dragnet Authentic Adventure is next on NBC. Mm.